here we go. Hey guys, this is Tom. Uh, thanks for tuning into my channel. So uh, today, or in this video, I just want to highlight my opinions or differences, what I think is important about uh, Canon 5D Mark IV and the Nikon D850. So um, first and foremost, uh, everybody's like, well, should I get a 5D or a Nikon D850? And the short answer is, if you don't have any lenses, uh, get a Nikon D850. If you have Nikon lenses, get a Nikon D850. If you only have one or two Canon lenses, you might wanna get a Nikon D850. Um, that's how it is in beginning of the year 2018. Now, um, if you're invested into uh, Canon uh, and you have the lenses, the speed lights or whatnot, you can't really go wrong with the uh, Mark IV. Also, if you don't shoot 4K, if you shoot a lot of video and you like Canon cameras, Canon uh, color space, controls or whatnot, the dual pixel AF autofocus, um, especially in uh, in the live view and the you know video shooting mode, this will keep your subject in focus without you worrying about focus when you're blogging or when you're shooting weddings, um, especially with the uh, like how nice and smooth it is when you shoot weddings and um, I don't know how many people shoot 4k weddings nowadays but if you shoot the 1080p weddings um, this camera might be really good except it doesn't have a flip out LCD in that case maybe you should go for the cheaper 6d because the flip out LCD is a huge huge feature uh, I would love in this camera um, this one has a tilt LCD and it wins on the you know, the tilt LCD or LCD options kind of benchmark. Because, uh, you know, lets you shoot low, lets you shoot high. You know, it's just, it's just amazing how versatile this option is. Um, it seems like um, Nikon, we're well, actually both Canon and Nikon, at least for a while. They both were kind of stuck that the pro camera doesn't need a video, doesn't need tilting screen. And I hope that'll change because the tilting screen doesn't really take away, doesn't take anything away from a professional body. And I um, actually had a tilted screen in like a point and shoot in, uh, gosh, probably like 15 years ago. So it just takes forever to um, to adopt these some of these features. Um, I guess mainly because um, you know there's some marketing. I guess folks at Nikon or Canon that, you know, they, they they tell engineering what to develop. So besides like, you know, the main features with the megapixels, obviously this is 45 megapixels, this is 30. Um, so for example, let me tell you how I shoot weddings. I typically shoot weddings with two camera bodies, right? And two lenses. So uh, I typically carry 2470 and 7200 when I shoot weddings. And you need that to kind of cover all the ranges of, uh, focal lengths and 24 is just like wide enough to shoot everything um, and then 2470 well it's like everything indoors you can shoot with 27 2470 and if you want to shoot some portraits or outdoor stuff more kind of like uh, photojournalism style then 7200 is perfect uh, but actually with this Nikon D850 since it has so many megapixels you could probably get away with two primes uh, I was thinking you could probably get away with a 24 millimeter on one body and 85 millimeter on the other body because um, with the 24 you could crop later to I guess even 50 millimeters and still end up with like a 12 megapixel image um, and and 12 megapixel when you deliver 12 photos 12 megapixels is pretty much enough for any wedding client uh, you know at least when it comes to weddings yeah, I mean, so it'd be interesting. Maybe you carry less weight or carry higher end lenses, like, uh, you know, like a 24 1.4 on Nikon, you know, because it has so many megapixels and then shoot it that way, you know, just a thought. Okay, so let's go back to topic, Canon versus Nikon. Um, honestly, like this camera technology advanced so much. I mean, you can't really go wrong with the Canon, even though Nikon beats it on, on, on so many specs. 
Um, even noise characteristics are about the same. Some people say that this wins, some say that this wins. Dynamic range is, is great on both cameras. Um, so either one you pick, if you just take photos, uh, I mean, you can't really go wrong unless you need those extra megapixels. Um, because in, in nowadays, you know, the camera technology is so advanced, you just, you really can't go wrong. Even if you pick a $2,000 camera, it probably does everything you need it to do. So if you only have specifics, that's when you should, you know, you should like make a list of what you want in a camera. Like this is what I have to have. I have to have 40 megapixels, I have to have 4K, 60 frames. Then both of these are out. Um, actually, when it comes to like video, Neither one of these are like pro video cameras. I mean, they do a great job. They have simple settings and then, you know, they capture great video. But if you want a lot of flexibility in the video codecs and settings, then you should probably go with the Panasonic GH5 or GH5S, which is even cheaper than this. The only issue with the GH5S is that it's a smaller sensor, so it has more noise, more depth of field. Um, but actually, I'm shooting this on a Panasonic GH5 and the quality is just amazing. Um, like the images are clear and crisp. Um, but you know, just depends what you need or what your needs are, obviously. Um, so Nikon also has um, Canon beat on the frames per second. Normally they're all both, uh, what, seven frames per second. Uh, but if you add a Nikon grip and also you have to buy the professional D5 battery, so this sets you back like 600 bucks. You can get it up to um, nine frames per second. So this thing just attaches like this. Boom. And then the grip also offers vertical buttons here, which is kind of cool. Makes the camera bigger. And then you can probably take what, 2000 photos with this setup because uh, one battery goes in the body and a big battery goes in here or you can put a one regular battery here or replace this and put the like an icon d5 battery okay uh, actually have a plate here so canon's a little different because uh i don't know if this is a actual grip for 5t but um so canon has uh i think this grip is for 60 actually but in any case for illustration i'll do um so canon has this thing sticking out here so they don't they require you to take out the battery from the inside here, which, um, which kind of sucks because they could have kept it, just made some contacts on the body here. So you could have extra batteries. And then two of these go inside the grip here, okay? They just go in like this. Like this. Um, so you can double the battery life, but you can't like triple it like with this one. I just thought maybe this is kind of redundant. Um, so with that regard, I think Nikon wins on a battery level, although it costs a lot of money. Um, where um, Canon wins is, is um, again, the focusing, dual pixel AF, um, and also Canon has a GPS built in. If you like color space of Canon, then Canon will win. If you like color space of Nikon, Nikon will win. Uh, viewfinders, I actually prefer the viewfinder of, of a, a D850 and also the D850 has this little uh, blackout feature where if you take long exposures you can just, it just covers the back of this. Um, there's like a little shutter mechanism here uh, which is cool because then the light doesn't creep in through the viewfinder into, uh, into your image sensor uh, when the mirror is up. Um, also another really neat feature, especially if you shoot at night, gosh, I'm really selling the Nikon here, is the illuminated buttons. Um, not all the buttons are illuminated, but it helps you find your way when it's completely dark, which is actually pretty neat. Um, let's see what else we got. One more thing about video, forgot to mention. When this shoots 4K, um, this has that 1.75 crop, which is ridiculous, completely ridiculous. Now, if, not, if Canon offered a full size, full frame, and then a crop for 4K, that would be nice because then, you know, one lens could have two focal lengths. But no, they just went with the crop because they think otherwise it would overheat. Um, throw in a heat sink in there or something. This is a $3,300 camera. 
Now this, and then uh, if you buy a US version, it only has NTSC video settings like 2997 frames and 24p. Uh, this Nikon actually has NTSC and PAL versions uh, or frame rates of uh, you know 2997, 25, and also the Cinema 24. Uh, but the 4K is full readout, so 4K, you know, you get the entire 45 megapixel uh, sensor scaled down to 4K, which results in amazingly sharp 4K. Um, and then Kodak also, they go with this motion JPEG, which is a ridiculous Kodak, just, you know, eats up your hard drive space. I mean, come on, can I address those issues? As far as like microphone or other video settings, again, they're basic. Um, they do offer, a, a, they both offer a microphone and headphone jacks. Um, they help, you know, as far as ports, they both have pretty much same, same ports, just a different layout. Uh, you have the mini HDMI, USB 3, and then a flash sync, uh, I think flash sync the front here um, and then they also offer like some Nikon offers a GPS or remote I think that's where it plugs in here um, what's nice about Nikon too is, is like the AF's button um, they exist here AF manual which is kind of redundant and then you have uh, you know the settings on the lens and then what's nice too with these you can assign uh, you can assign buttons to these, um, especially in a Nikon. Um, so it seems like Nikon has a little bit more customization in the menu. Um, and you can really dive deep and, and uh, do a lot of settings. Yeah, Canon, I don't think it offers that, ma that much customization when it comes to buttons. But like as far as image quality, they, they both can be you know, adjusted you know, to your liking. Oh, uh, storage cards, okay. So the Nikon offers QXD and SD slots, and um, Canon offers SD and compact flash, which is a little bit dated, but still works. Um, so it seems like, almost like this 5D is the camera of yesterday, and it kinda is, because, well, it came out a year before the D850, so I think just the Nikon wanted to throw everything they had in the kitchen sink. I mean, this camera is still not fully in stock in all the stores. Um, and it's been quite some time, I think like six months or so. Like I said, if, if you don't have any lenses, get the Nikon. If you're invested into Canon, can't really go wrong. Unless the, the features I mentioned are showstoppers, really. Okay, well, um, yeah. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you, uh, if you watch this till the end, then I think you should subscribe because I guess you like these videos. Thanks a lot, take care.